In this video, I would like to put together everything that we have discussed about the short run and the long run costs. And namely, I will explain the relationship between short run average costs and the long run average cost. The long run average cost that I am showing you right now is also called as the envelope curve. So this envelope curve is the concept which is the essence of this video, which is extremely, extremely important in microeconomics. So let's start. I will describe this graph from left to right. I will describe what happens in the production of a firm from the beginning until it grows bigger and bigger. So suppose that the firm starts to produce output. It starts to create units of output. Suppose that in the very beginning it creates the level of Q1 for output. And this is the short run average cost for that specific level. This is considered the short run because if you remember in the short run we have fixed factors of production like land and capital and specialist labor. However, over the long run, if you remember what I discussed in a couple of videos before, we just increase the number of fixed factors of production. But the production itself, the production cycle is always considered to be a short run phenomena. The long run is for adjustment purposes, is for adjusting the level of fixed factors of production that are being employed. But the production cycle itself is always a short run phenomena. That's why we have so many short run cycles over this curve. Now, how does it actually work? In the beginning, the level of Q1 is achieved at the fairly high level of average cost C1. So the average cost of production in the beginning is going to be C1. As you can notice, it is a point tangential tangible on the long run average cost. So therefore, the firm knows that it could actually achieve an even lower cost over here. At this point that I'm highlighting right now, the firm could achieve that point if it were to increase its production. However, the firm also knows that could, it could achieve even a smaller cost and a smaller average cost of production if it is going to adjust its fixed factors of production. So therefore, what the company is going to do, it's going to invest in additional fixed assets like land and capital. And therefore, it's going to transition to a new short run cycle where it's going to produce more output from Q1 to Q2. It increases the output at a lower average cost per unit going from C1 to C2. This is going to be the new average cost of production. And the reason being, as I said, it's because it adjusted its production facilities. The fixed factors of production have been increased such that the production process becomes more efficient and they achieve a lower average cost per unit. On top of that, the story continues. We move on along our production processes and we want to increase production from Q2 to Q3. Well, in order to increase production so drastically, we need significantly more investments into our land, capital, and probably the specialist labor. So our fixed factors of production have to be adjusted again. Therefore, we go from our second cycle to the third cycle over here on the blue curve. And we can see that on the blue curve, again, we are achieving a low, uh, sorry, an average cost of C3, which is the lowest average cost on our graph. Now, this point over here is a critical point that I want to spend a few moments on. This point is the absolute minimum average cost that we can achieve in our production process. This is the, as cheap as we can get. There will be a point along our production process where the minimum point of the short run average cost will be the minimum point of the long run average cost. And that just shows the level of production where the company is as efficient as it can be, meaning it produces the goods as cheap as it can. And beyond that point, notice that the long run average cost starts rising again. So we are having an increase in the average costs in the long run. And the reason being is because of diminishing returns of productivity of the 
factors of production. Since they become less efficient, less productive over time, in order to push our production so far as to get to the level of Q4, we will incur higher average costs per unit because now the investments in new fixed factors of production have to be even higher. We have to hire even more labor. So on average, our costs start rising. But nevertheless, compare the level of Q4 and compare the beginning level of Q1. As you can see, over now, after so much production, we can, we can create so much output at just at average level, average cost of C4. So the average cost of C4 is still significantly lower than the beginning average cost of C1. And that's because we have been producing, we have been employing fixed factors of production, our labor has been specializing, so our factors of production are becoming more and more efficient the more we produce. So over the long run, we are achieving a higher output with a lower average cost per unit. However, there is one point where the company minimizes the average cost of production, where it reaches the lowest possible average cost of production, which is the tangent point between the short run average cost over here and the long run average cost, which is the minimum of the short run average cost curve and the long run average cost curve. I hope this all makes sense. I appreciate you all watching. If you like the video, please make sure to subscribe and we are done.